All right, what's up guys? We are here actually in my backyard, which is a complete work in progress and in a completely different location than Mike's house, than what we've seen before in our beekeeping with Dallas. So we wanted to show you guys how you could do it, if how you could beekeep if you live in a suburban or urban type area. So um, I live in Salt Lake City and um, Dallas is showing me the way and is kind enough to um, share his knowledge with me and also Mike. And so we're gonna show you my current setup we were here 21 days ago right. with Dallas and we did the initial setup of my two hives and we checked and found both queens. Right. And then I've been keeping an eye on my hives in the meantime and have sent Dallas some videos and some still shots and even a few slow-mos. Mm -hmm. And now we're here to get into the hives, do the work, We've got a few extra um, pieces of um, nu nutrients and or yep, yep. you can lead us through that when when it's time. But we've got some things to do in the hive today. So um, Dallas is here from Cal Calipulia Honey. Yep. Sorry, it's uh, always difficult for me to get that out. <laughs> and I'll let him kind of tell you what we're going to do today with my hives. So the goal today is, is to check on that 21 day interval after we set them up. We made sure that they were queen right, that everything was healthy and moving along. We treated them with a with a, a, a miticide, basically, to um, suppress the varroa mites, the destructor mites that could possibly be in them. That was a preventative measure based on we don't know what other kind of bees are in the area, other beekeepers are here, whether they're treating their hives or not. Today, we're going to remove that and we're going to put in organic mite treatments because we're starting to come into a honey flow and we don't want that the non-organic uh, mechanism in there. So we'll move the organic today. Again, checking queens to make sure that they are on pace with the summer honey flow that we're anticipating coming along. We don't need to worry about water requirements really being in this suburban urban setting because there's plenty of bird baths and swimming pools and people, neighbors with gardens and, and fruit trees and stuff like that. So the bees have a constant source of water. That's not our concern. The biggest concern today is to make sure that we're up and running, that we're building a big population for that summer honey flow that's coming, and that we um, that we don't have any parasites threatening us in any way, shape, or form. All right. That's it. Let's go. So if you guys keep coming back, you'll see um, our remodel of our backyard. And uh, we've, we've remodeled our entire house, and we'll show you, I'll give you a little tour of the front yard to show you all the bee food that's in the front there. But um, yep. keep coming back and I'll show you what happens in the backyard. Got big plans. All right, so Dallas has shown me how to do this. And you light the paper at the bottom, make sure it's well lit, and then put it in there. And then put some on top. Puff, puff, puff. Puff, puff, puff. Puff, puff, puff. So these are wood chips. And you listen. And you listen, right. You want to hear that. Hear that, that good burn, that good throaty roar. That's sounding better. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's super smoky. <laughs> Must be working. It's hazards of the job. Shake. Puff, puff, puff. Yep. And be good should be good all right now i'll close this up okay now what i'm gonna do is listen to dallas and he's gonna tell me what to do next <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just gonna let him know we're here just okay. gonna give him a little introductory smoke in the door okay let him know we're here yep yep Probably want to work that back high first, Dee. Okay. There we go. There we go. Alrighty. Now I'm going okay. to take the top off. Yep, take, take that off. <laughs> and get my tool. Move that little cork. Alright, I'm gonna put that on. Okay. Put that away. Okay. 
handle to the outside and a girl. That's the only thing you have to keep telling me over and over again. Whoa! We're going to have a segment on smoker fires. <laughs> it's a real thing. Dallas, would you mind just kind of explaining what Oops. you're doing while she's doing it? Okay, well, we're, we're going to... have to be like... Sure, sure. Because these bees aren't migratory. They're not going to travel around on the back of a truck from crop to crop. We, we, we put nails in the lids for the journey over from Oregon to make sure that we didn't lose any lids along the way. Well, now we can kind of dispense with the nails because the bees are in a basic permanent location. So she doesn't need those to fasten down the lids. The bees will do a great job of gluing those lids down. Okay, so now, Dallas, what do you want you, me to do? Now we're going to lift that top super off. Okay. We're going to smoke it. We're going to set it over here on this hive. Okay. Yep, smoke it. go at your feet. Remember, put that in there and give it a good wrap. Turn that hive tool over so you don't hurt your hand. Okay. Go. She's going to crack that up and then reach for that smoker and kind of let mm -hmm. them know that she's coming. There we go. Set that up on here. Yep. Avoid the nails if you can. There we go. Perfect. This lets us look down into the second super. You're going to want to shot it. Go over by her, Joanne. Shoot right straight down on that. And just we're going to count to 10 kind of slow and let them come up out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is, this is the nurse bees coming up to the light. They're down there keeping that brood warm, the unborn bees warm, and they'll kind of give you an indication of the area that they're covering right now. You can see that we have bees on the inside of this frame, clear out around to the end, clear out to the wall here. Okay, so we know we're covering at least seven of these eight frames, seven and a half because we're covering half of this one as well. Notice there's more bees to this side of the hive right now than there is to this side of the hive. This is the warmer side. So, okay. Okay. So how, what does it look like there? Do you Nobody's know? really up here. Nobody's up a here. A few, very few. Right, right. Okay. So what we can do now is let's feel the weight of this hive. And does it feel real heavy? Do we feel like we have a lot of weight on it? Oh, Lord. Feel that. You need that as a reference, Dee. Okay. You need to reference this. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay is the right answer. Wow. So we're going to switch positions with these supers. Okay. This super is full, okay. very full of honey. We want to put this super because it has more room in it underneath. Okay. And then we'll look into the top of this one. So okay. So you want me to... You're going to lift this one lift off, this. set it here. We're going to set that one on, pull the lid off. Okay. We're just going to let them know we're coming. That's it. Can you peel it off? There you go. A little heavier than Mike, so. Yeah. You got this? Make yeah. sure you're all the way on, kid. Okay. That a girl. Now okay. leave it back. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my. That's the right shape. You see, that's kind of kind of got the sun working against you there, Julian. But you can see that there are bees wall to wall, top to bottom. That's full of young brood in here and honey stores that they're putting in. Very good. Okay, you want to pull one of those frames, Dee Dee? Yeah. From the middle. Okay. So what she's going to do is we're going to check the queen. We don't have to actually have to see the queen to know that she's there. We just need to see evidence that she's there. So we're going to, he's going to remove a frame in the center of that cluster. And that's where the brood is and where the young unborn bees are. And we will check to make sure that our queen is, has a healthy laying pattern, that she's laying lots of eggs. And this is a, a really good look at, a, at the overall general health of the hive, like the doctor putting a stethoscope on your chest. So I'm loosening the... What's this thing called? Frame. The frame. Mm -hmm. From the box, and I pull it out straight. Real straight and real slow. Not to scrape them. 
Beautiful. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've got little bitties, maybe a couple day or two old standing straight up. And eggs? then I've got eggs. Yep. Beautiful. And then I've got larva curled to a C. And then I've got capped brood. This is the capped brood. This is the, 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 the young bees are pupating underneath this brood. They're finishing their growth cycle. So then... All the healthy signs. And then we've got drone. Drone brood. Up here. Drone brood. That's the boys. That's Those are all of the boys. The males. Well, boys. Yeah. The males. <laughs> yeah, okay. We want to take I a pe quick peek on the other side. See the queen. See her. Oh, I see pollen on legs. Oh, More brood pattern. Lots of larvae. Lots of larvae and eggs. Eggs. Yep. Good. Great pattern. Good. Excellent. Got some pollen and no honey. So all the signs is, of a real healthy hive. Um, Julian, can you see in there? Can you okay. film into that cell? Yeah. Okay, so they're... What do you got? The standing up ones? The eggs. Eggs. Those are eggs less than three days old if they're still standing up. Yep. Fresh eggs. That's that's a sign that the, the queen has, is, is in the hive doing well, thriving right now. Perfect. So we don't need to see her. We don't need to see her. Nope. Perfect. Okay, Mama. Would have been great. Doing... Would have been nice to see her, but you want to pull another frame? Do you? You good? Yeah, we can pull another frame. Okay, so you want set to? that one. Yeah, just set that one over across the front here like you did before. Okay. Pull that next one close to you. It's got some See that guy has pollen on his leg. Yeah, her I legs. saw that. Hang on, girls. Okay. So. All right, lots of capped brood. Let's see if we see her. Real healthy sign, all that capped brood. Lots of eggs in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the sun is just right. Yeah, I don't see her. I don't either. More capped brood, very healthy. This is a little patch of drone brood here, the boys. And then, Dee, Dee there should be eggs and larvae in the center in here. Yeah. Okay, great. New, new. New, new. Little very ones. good. Very good. Okay. Then, we'll call that okay. in. All right. Okay. Perfect. Oops. Perfect. You good? Yeah. Spacing. I'd come from the other way, Didi. Had a girl. Perfect. Over there. Okay. Beautiful. Now we need to go to do the the goop. Goop. Okay. Let me get my gloves on. I'm gonna leave the smoke over here by you. Keep puffing that for a bit. Let it warm okay. back up. This stuff is made from hops. Mm -hmm. It's the distilled salts from hops. It's organic. Um, so we don't have to worry about it. It's approved for, for being on the hive during a, a honey flow. It won't contaminate the honey in any way, shape, or form. The, uh, the only downside I've ever found to this product is it's miserable to work with. It's just greasy. I forgot to get a picture for Bri. Oh. Of what it looks like on the inside. Okay. This is called HopGuard 3. It's the it's the salt distillates from hops when they process hops for beer, for beer making. And um, it's found to be a great uh, 
a great tool in fighting the varroa mite infestations, the parasite that infests the bees. And it's uh, because it's an organic material, we can put it in the beehive while we're putting supers on that we want to extract honey from later in the summer. Super sticky. You got her. And... I'm just gonna slide this in here and this one in here. Okay. All right. Okay. Now put this one on. Yep, because we're gonna rearrange these. It's important if you look at the way that she sets that on there, it's important that the alignment is the same each time. It was discovered a long time ago that bees have a, a spacing issue that they prefer. It's called bee spacing. It's about three eighths, five sixteenths of an inch. If you violate that spacing and put things too close together, they will bind them together. If you leave the thing, object frames, things like that position too far apart, they will tie it all together with comb. So that spacing is important. And this you can tell so heavy. she's really oh careful oh my gosh. putting it's that so on there. so much honey in here. Yes, there is. Okay. Okay. Go, no, no, go ahead and smoke them. We're gonna, we got to take a look at the, at the impending bounty here. They're so chill. Yeah. Take this frame over here and push it to the outside and see if you can pull it out. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh This my is goodness. all fresh honey. It's so heavy. <gasps> okay, so they haven't capped it. So that tells us it's fresh, it's, right? Yes. Because they haven't dehydrated it yet. Oh my goodness. It's Can all... you see down in the cells, Julian? Can you see the honey glistening in those cells? <laughs> Julian's like, what do you know? What's your side look like, Dee Dee? Nice. Same? Mine's capped. Oh, it's capped. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> so they've, they've, they've gathered enough nectar and they've capped it and they, they, they dehydrate it to dry it out. And then they slowly, as you see these caps are getting smaller, they're drying it out, they're shrinking it, they put those caps on it to seal it. And so that's the way they'll store it until they use it or until Dee Dee comes and steals it from them. With a smile <laughs> kindly, on her face. Kindly, with a smile on her face. lovingly. Yeah, turn oh. that around, put that cap to the outside, Dee Dee. This? Yes. Okay. They've already done it, so why not put it out there where they don't need to be? Perfect. Oh my gosh. Nice landing. You didn't scrape a single bee. Nice Ooh. landing. You can you can look forward to that. Okay. Yeah. You happy? Good job, ladies. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Okay. Now top on? Top on. Okay. You're, the, you're home. That's wow. And okay. I left you some little yellow corks, or I sent them in the box with the Okay. I'll yeah. go get them. They're inside. We don't need them now. We'll, I'll come back and put it yeah, on. Yeah, we'll we'll get them after a bit. Okay, good job, ladies. Yeah, that's that's good news. Okay. Do we need to relight it, do you think? We're gonna work it. We just if we're we don't, gonna work on it. We don't uh, use it frequently enough, sometimes it'll go out. You just have to convince it that it needs to go back. Puff, puff, puff. You want a cold white smoke is what you want. It's getting better. Okay. All right, we'll dust we'll smoke there. Yep. Front, yep, front. Same drill as last time. You'll move everything over to here. Okay. Pull the nails. You got it going. Okay. And then I'm going to remove the nails. And... There you go. There you go. Okay. Second to last one. I finally got it. Handle out. There we go. Yes. Okay. Now... I'm going to take this one off and set it over mm -hmm. there. Okay, Dallas, tell us what the why it's sticky, like why I'm having to pry it. It's, what um, is it stuck with? It's a substance that, that the bees call propolis. Propolis in Greek means the entrance to the city, or in Latin means the entrance to the city. And bees, it's what you see along the bottom here. It's where they're slowly gluing gluing things together. Here's a great shot of it here. 
Julian. This is the propolis. This is what people call bee glue. Remember we talked about the bee, bees want to glue everything together, make it airtight, make it watertight so water and rain don't seep in. And so that's what they use. This is the plant phenols, the polyphenols from plants, the resins, the pitches, the saps. It's incredibly sticky, incredibly antimicrobial, antibacterial, um, very medicinal, very medicinal product. Something often overlooked in the beekeeping industry. Um, okay. You're doing it. You're doing it. Okay, I'm doing these guys, but yeah. I'm going to lift this one off and yes, put it on there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They're super chill. Okay. So, in your opinion, we added these supers. Now, was that a good idea? Um, Are they doing the smokestack thing? Um, well, the supers that you added were these. Right. And obviously they're not doing anything. See, see how they, there's there's really no activity going on up here. Okay. So we were just early. We were just we were just a little early is all. Okay. A little. Um, so it wasn't a bad decision. It wasn't a bad decision. Nothing that isn't correctable, but um, there you go. Perfect. Make sure it stays on there. Do you do that front edge. Okay. Good girl. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. So again, so. the bees kind of show us the center of the hive. You can kind of see this 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 oval this pattern starting to evolve. This is the nurse bees coming up to the light. So there's most likely brood and unborn bees in here. So okay, so we're going to get the... Um, pull the strips out. Pull the strips out. There you go. Right, point it down. There you go. Okay. Then... Mm -hmm. I can take the drone beat the drone, Oops, drone brood 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 off. off. That's just drone brood that is not really necessary to the hive's Unless benefit. Yes. Okay, so I can give that to the chickens. chickens. Yeah. I'm gonna put that right over sure. there. And then we're gonna take a look at a frame. Okay. See which one we wanna we think maybe the queen was on. Does something look easy to get out? We see lots of brood here. This might be a good one, Didi. Try this that one. one. Mm -hmm. Push it all the one way and then all the other way. And... Okay, and what makes you think um, that the queen might be on it? You, um, look, you look so fast. It's, I, it's, I think I know what you're looking for. It's the for. center of the, brood, of the brood cluster. Okay. Okay, and I don't see a lot of brood on that top bar. Could be wrong. If you lift it out, we'll know. There we go. You don't always find the queen on a on a frame of completely capped brood, because that 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 those that frame is capped. There's no place else for her to lay eggs. Okay, lots of so um, lots of open cells here. But lots of so lots of little C's Good. and a couple of big C's and then a lot of eggs. Eggs. Great, that's wonderful. Lots of pollen over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just saw something. Go ahead. Pollen on legs. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Drone brood. Drone brood. This is where the strip was. I don't see her. Okay. I'm going to slide that back in, Didi. Okay. Very good. It's, it's very important. See the way she's sliding that in there dead straight? She's not leaning it one way to, or the other. It's um, important that you do that, that you don't rub the bees against each other. Okay. okay. You got it? Two, yep. This looks too good to waste. It's funny, whatever he did just made him look crazy. They're not like him, see that? Okay, you're gonna cut this film in about 10 seconds. They're going crazy. They are going crazy. Do you smoke them and put that in? You get ready to hand that to me. Set it down. Okay, sorry. They've discovered our microphones. Oh, they have? Yeah, they're just mobbing your microphone. Oh, shit. Okay. You get back away. Okay. Step over there behind the house in the shade, DD. Okay, yes, sir. Don't take that smoker with you. Oh, no? She runs off with all the ammo. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. so sorry. I don't believe him. It's not very smoky. You gotta take that microphone off or tuck it down in your shirt. They okay. hate it. 
you've got bee stingers in that microphone right now. You can see one on there. Oh, wow. Okay. You have a microphone on. I know, but I wasn't in the middle of them like you were. Okay. I'm watching mine, but they were, you had at least a dozen at one point trying to sting that. Okay. All right. We're about to turn a really good day into a really bad day. Wow, we Good job. I felt the shift. You like, felt the shift in the hive, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because that bee stung that, and those pheromones are out there. Those, those danger pheromones. Wow. And everybody picks up on that, and you were the target. Okay. So we're going to lift the lid. Okay, okay, lift the lid. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Okay. They're still a little wild. Yep. Perfect. Okay. We're going to lift that one up. We're going to lift... This is, oh, this is the empty one. Nope, that's good. We're going to put this, this on. Going there. Yep. I got... Uh, it'll be pretty heavy too, Dean. Okay, I'm just going to get this drone... You're good. Brewed off. Okay, give that to you. There you go. Just gonna set that back on here. This leaves a, a void in the hive between the busy part and the busy part. So the queen will rush to that void and start to fill that up with eggs. And then subsequently the bees will start to bring... Uh, you wanna check? You wanna push over. See push the, over. See the oh, spacing yeah. issue? Okay. This is good. We just have a big space right here we wanna close. Um, there you go. Other than that, you look good. Okay. Your uh, front corner, front edge needs to come towards you three eighths of an inch of the whole box. Look down at your knee, your left knee. See the see the ledge. Oh, here. Yes. Okay. Lift, lift. There you go. Perfect. Good. One more. One more. About a quarter of an inch. There you are. Perfect. Okay. You're there. Okay. Alrighty. See how she brought that frame over and even that up. So we talked about that spacing. Now the bees have equal distance spacing all the way from the bottom up through here. These the, All these channels line up and that benefits them for ventilation and travel through there. Do you want to yeah. check this? You want to check it? You yeah. Cool? Okay. yeah. You're gonna, this frame is, we can look down here. That one's messed up. Okay. The one's yep. on my hold face. On, hold on. I got you. You didn't get you, did you? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Let's smoke them. I think you should look at this one. This one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Push that to the wall. Push this to the wall. Okay. That'll work. And then bring it back to you. She's left-handed. It confuses me. <laughs> she, she does everything backwards. But my mentor was left-handed. You'd think I'd know by now. What was he like? He was the first immigration immigrant, first generation immigrant from Ireland. Came over after the Second World War. And um, was a, just a tremendous... Oh. teacher and he loved his bees so looks like all honey to me yes fresh honey 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 not capped yet and a little bit of capping going on there yeah. so this is the drier side of the frame they've reduced the moisture content here mm -hmm. lovely so i would take that frame and set it down Dee Dee, okay. because we're working on it i would pull the outside frame okay. just just i wouldn't even pull it out i'd just slide it over to okay. you and that'll encourage them to work on that Okay. And then you can put this one back in with the cap side out. Cap side out, yes. Right, because they've already worked on that. There you go. Already. Very good. And your spacing, and you're good. Okay, they're starting to get wound up again. Sure are. They, they kind of give us a little bit of time. They've been good to us so far. They did, they were. We're getting out of here, guys. We're getting out of here. So you want us to work, okay. but you're bu bugging us. Ready? We're ready. Okay. Just put her on and we're going. So you guys, what Dallas was just telling me was what we just did. We uh, accomplished a hive check, a check-in. So we, even though we didn't see the queen specifically herself, we saw clear evidence that the queen is healthy and doing her job. So we found one day old, all the way up to 21 day old brood yes. um, pattern all throughout mm -hmm. um, the hive. And then we also found evidence that um, they're gathering pollen and bringing it back to the hive 
both of them, as well as uh, great evidence of nectar gathering, which in turn um, is honey. It's going to turn into honey. Once yeah. they, they dry that out, it turns into honey. So we have um, uncapped honey that's beautiful, super shiny, and then we have some capped honey happening as well. So we've switched around the orientation of the supers, which are the green levels of the um, of the hives, or at least I just think yep. about them like mm -hmm. as apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. And so they're the additional layers on top. We've switched those so that the more empty ones are below the honey full ones right now, or the more honey full right. ones right now. Right. Um, what I would love to share with you guys is we're gonna head to the front yard and show you what sets this um, situation apart from maybe a more rural setting and why I maybe have such colorful well, pollen I, yes, and some yes. other things that set my hives apart from um, something that you might see in a more rural setting or something that we might see in, in Mike's house. Right. One thing, one thing also I'd like to add is people, people sometimes are apprehensive about getting bees and working bees because of the stigma of bees sting you and that kind of stuff. This is Dee Dee's second time working bees. And you see her working it without a veil, without gloves. It's all in about how you approach it. She's very calm. She's very methodical. She doesn't get too excited about it. She doesn't bang the hives around. She's very fluid in her motions. That's 90% of working with the bees. Is, is all about your countenance and how you project yourself to them. And you can tell it's very, very working very well. Yeah, so we just had an, an instance where um, they got set off by my microphone. Mm -hmm. And um, Dallas has told me before that they that bees are um, don't care for the color black as much as other colors. They uh, like more neutral colors and mm -hmm. light blue and things like that. So. They caught wind of it. One of them, I think, stung my microphone, which then caused them. And I felt the shift in the when I was working. And so the they attitude. started going nuts. They like you yeah. could just feel the vibration change. And Dallas just really was lovely and led me through um, kind of he took over and I got a little bit created a little bit of distance. But the smoke calmed them down. Mm -hmm. And then we just moved through what we needed to do, right. moved to the next layer you could feel them calm down, and then we were able to continue working right, the hive. Right. We just so, stayed calm through the whole thing. Um, I'm super grateful to have Dallas come and guide me through this um, adventure, and, and hopefully you guys are getting something out of it yeah. too. So let's head to the front yard and see what uh, we're up to in the front yard and why it is so great for the bees. All right, so we've moved to my front yard, which uh, we have remodeled and changed into completely and, and entirely raised planter beds for um, food and nourishment for my family and also my neighbors right. <laughs> and co-workers. Right, as a family. Um, so I'm, I'm going to share with you guys a few things that I know bees love that I really wanted to have in my garden and then a few things um, that I've that I've added since meeting Dallas. And and we're just gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing in the garden now, um, both to keep the humans happy, but also to keep the bees really happy. And specifically why something, a setup like this sets you apart um, in an ur urban or suburban exactly. situation as opposed to rural. So, right. um, so for instance, you were telling me about the strawberries and mm -hmm. the benefit to me right. having strawberries and specifically what do the bees bring to this The game? pollination, the bees visiting each flower and cross-pollinating the strawberries, studies have shown over and over again that it creates more fruit per plant and each individual fruit is bigger and healthier. That's the benefit of having insect pollination and the bees are the best insect at that. Yeah, so Dallas was telling me that and it was resonating as truth to me. I just did a big harvest of these um, strawberries yesterday and I noticed from last year the strawberries are larger sure. in this in this second harvest that I just sure. did. So um, this whole bed is, or a lot of this bed is echinacea, which is um, good for bees as well as um, some lavender and lupine. Right. Um, and then before, before Dallas and I even met in person, he had told me that herb gardens are really good. So this is predominantly herbs. We've got a ton of, um, thyme and rosemary, Thymes, oregano, sages. They just love yeah. them all. So, yeah. um, then here what's starting is, are my squashes, zucchinis mm -hmm. and, Cucumbers, mm -hmm. which you were telling me is the same situation here. It's the exact here. same thing. They almost require insect pollination. And again, 
um, in the applications where these are grown commercially, the farmer will import bees to that spot just to ensure a good pollination set. And it does create bigger, larger, healthier fruit yep. per plant. So late in the season, these um, vines will grow up and completely cover this structure. So I can't wait to see the benefit of having the bees and what um, our fruit looks like at the end of the season. So I do try to plant in succession so mm -hmm. that I'm constantly having something in fruit and something um, in, a, in a different stage of life. Right. So here we have our sort of phasing out of lettuce and spinach. What are, um, and I'm going to talk to Dallas more about what I'm gonna put in here next. But um, these sunflowers, I've noticed even as I'm sitting here now, there's a bee on there, but um, Dallas shared with me that the bees love sunflowers. So I'm going to add more and more. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I do can't too. get enough. Yeah. Um, so I've got a huge collection of tomatoes, tomatoes and the bees will pollinate all of my tomatoes. And bees love tomato pollen. It's very high in protein. So the bees will visit the plants often to gather that protein. That protein is what they use. That pollen is what they use as a protein in their life. They mix it with honey with nectar in the hive to create what is called bee bread. And it's the mixing of that plant pollen and that plant nectar that they feed to the unborn baby bees. And that's what those bees use to develop themselves with. So, and, and tomatoes are one of the best pollens bees can get. Super. More tomatoes, the better. Love it. Um, what else do we have? We have borage. Borage, so, huge honey, huge nectar source, borage, so lavenders. I use borage and I use calendula as a companion plant to other plants. They are supposed to help, both of those plants are supposed to help keep pests away from the plants that you want to actually right. fruit. Right. So I plant borage and calendula in between my tomatoes and actually throughout the whole garden. And um, Dallas caught wind of that and saw that the first time he visited and was like, mm -hmm. yes, they yeah. love borage. They the more borage, borage, the better. Right. Um, so I've got some carrots and lots of other stuff, but basically um, they've got kind of a buffet to they choose do. from. And, and your subsequential plantings or sequential plantings helps a lot too, as one, one nectar pollen source phases out and matures, she has a new one coming on. So you keep this constant supply of nectar and pollen rolling into the bees. That's gonna keep them on the gain all summer long. And you want that head of steam going into fall. So if, if my bees are not only dependent on my right. yard, though. Right. They, they, they don't understand property lines or fences. And if you look at the neighborhood, you're gifted and blessed to have all these neighbors. I see lavender everywhere. I see all kinds of perennials. I see all kinds of ornamental trees in the yards. This is going to start you early in the spring. This is going to carry you late into the fall, where an, a rural setting may not have that. A rural setting is going to generally have a later spring and an earlier fall, and that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. And you have within a good solid third of a mile in every direction, your bees are going to forage that far. So you not only have your yard, not only your neighborhood, you have several neighborhoods. You have the local park down here that your bees are gonna forage on. Okay. And so um, I just blanked out, but I was gonna ask you something else about neighbors and, oh, I know. So my, having so many different types of plants, what is my honey gonna be like? Your honey is gonna be a very mixed floral variety of honey. Okay. You're gonna have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And as, as far as a table grade honey goes, it will be wonderful. All right. It will be wonderful because you're gonna have some vegetable nectar in there. You're gonna have, you know, ornamental nectars in there. It will just be a, a, a medley of different blossoms and nectar sources. Okay. As opposed to like, if you were, if you were more rural or mm -hmm. even agricultural, bees would be set on a plot of like one They would crop. be on, a, on basically a monoculture. Okay. And so all of the honey would probably be that varietal or 90% of the honey in that. The struggle with that is bees over time get a little burnt out on a, on, on a monoculture. Okay. They really want diversity in the nectar source and diversity in the pollen source. That makes for healthier hives. And, and, and you're sitting in the perfect spot for that. The other thing about that is rural bees and a lot are dependent on, on the rain for moisture for those flowers to grow to produce the nectar. Urban bees are not. They're not dependent on the weather patterns for rain because everyone is watering their garden, watering their parks, watering their flower beds. So you have a lot more um, consistent source of nectar, I would say. Okay, super. Well, you guys, I 
loved sharing this with you guys. And um, I thank Dallas for no sharing worries. his knowledge and expertise. He has 50 years of um, beekeeping and master beekeeper. I don't actually know all of the beekeeping credentials, but he's just all around amazing guy and has a deep desire to share um, his experiences and expertise with us here at Fieldcraft and you um, on all of our channels. So be sure to tune in and drop comments below about anything that you'd like yes. to hear more about. We are working on a series of um, of content for you and lessons to get you help you get started. And we're answering all of your questions. So um, what, do, what do we say? Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. No, just kidding. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>